Welcome to the Unashamed Podcast with Phil Robertson, Al and Jace Robertson as well. Uh, coming to you here from our Unashamed Command Center down here on the river. Uh, the river's been up. We've been talking a lot about the flood here recently in our area. Uh, floods bring snakes, and so we're going to tell some snake stories. If you like snakes, uh, <laughs> you may not like what we talk about. We don't necessarily like them, but we're going to talk a lot about uh, how snakes have interacted uh, with our family through the years. Uh, talk about battling brothers, of course, Cain and Abel from Genesis 4, but also some battles that went on in our own house, mostly Willie and Jace. And you have that father who judged them and me. Uh, and also kind of link that to our father as well. So a lot of good stuff today on the podcast. Glad you tuned in. Um, let us know what you think. I am unashamed. What about you? All right, so Jace made our coffee today. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, it's pretty stout. I said, boy, this is too strong. What do you say, Phil? That is literally perfect. <laughs> so if it's Whoa. if it's so strong to us that you just barely can drink it, Dad's like, now we're now you're at your starting point. I mean, I had an event last night in Tyler, Texas. I drove, so I got in late, and so I just I woke up. You know, you just feel like you've been run over by a truck. So I made I hadn't been up very long. That's why I got the shades <laughs> on. The strongest. So Jay, Jay's Cosme's he's, he's like. 15 minutes before we're supposed to be here to do the podcast. And he's like, are we doing a podcast today? I'm I like, yeah, we're supposed to be doing one about 15 minutes. But if you're calling me, it's going to be, it takes us a little while to get out of here. Well, the backstory was Missy come in there and said, I thought you were doing a podcast. I was like, what's today? <laughs> so, you know. so now you know what it, my life is like to pull this off. This it was, a, a, good, it was is, a good event, by the way. This is a yee-haw, yee-haw cup of coffee. <laughs> What do you yeah. call it? Russian tap dance? Dad, when Russian you, tap dance. When you when you drink some of this, you're ready to do it. That little. is a cup of coffee. Well, <laughs> I noticed when you combine very strong coffee with the Holy Spirit, oh, you got something. It's a you, bone it to be chewed. Yeah. energy, <laughs> almost of a supernatural. Well, that's what we need. Now, so, so the fate down here, Dad, I get here today, and the first thing I notice is for the first time in months, I'm able to – drive into your house i mean the the water has finally receded the, the hazards of living in a on an island basically with water all the way around you except one little pigtail pig trail through the woods yep, peninsula. we've been that way as hard as it is to believe almost seven months high water has come right up to my house and what's amazing is when you first pulled over this hill right here because i was in the vehicle and you said we'll take it yeah <laughs> because it's surrounded by water it's in a flood zone it's cheap because no rational thinking human would live here we got seven acres of land <laughs> and two houses for 29 grand that's right that's where we started down here <laughs> well you fast forward 40 years and here we're doing. Here we're, we're sitting here pontificating. So it worked. <laughs> but the bottom line is, uh, the hazards of that particular lifestyle is as follows. Now Bobo, he's my guard dog and a snake wrangler on the side. So the first snake in the last thirty days, he's been bitten twice by very poisonous. Cottonmouth moccasins. Because you got higher water, you got more snakes. More snakes. So you got to take them out. The first one, he he bathed the snake. I'm out there picking up Mayhaws, and I see him over there. He's looking at me, and he said, I got one here. That's what he was telling me. I said, I'll be over in a minute. So I got my Mayhaws. <laughs> I went around in the boat, got out, walked over there, picked up my weapon, and I walked over there to where the snake was. I knew he had a snake bathed. We <laughs> were and the snake would try to get away, and he'd cut him off. So I looked down, and it's a cottonmouth about about a two-and-a-half-footer, you know, pretty good-sized girth on him. Water mugs and Water poison. Water mugs, cottonmouth. Extremely poisonous. You yep. bet you, very poisonous. So I raised up to shoot him. Bobo's watching me. So I raised up to shoot him, and when he saw me raise that gun up, he said, it's, it's kill time. Well, instead of waiting on me to disable the snake to where it'd be easier for him. I was just going to disable the snake. 
I said, I, I wasn't worried about a headshot. I just said, I, it was in the weeds. I said, let me just get in here and slow the snake down where Bobo will finish him off. But Bobo decided that I can handle it without you shooting him. <laughs> so he runs in there, and the, the idea of a snake wrangler is to pick up the snake, but you better start shaking him. Right immediately. To, immediately, yeah. very hard, which, so he can't get to you. Well, during the shaking process, the snake – caught him right up under his jaw. Wham. So the, I know he's snake bit. Bobo still kills him. Oh, he he, he, he <laughs> kills him. And he walks away, but he's staggering. Mm. Within seconds, he's he's staggering. I said, son, you should have waited till I got a couple of bullets in him. It would have been better. But he didn't listen. Well, within, I love the within an hour, between that and Bobo. within an hour, uh, the side of his head is bigger than this glass. It looks like a volleyball right here. So it gets way out here. Well, he just lays up the rest of the night. He's sick. He's kind of, he's a, his stomach is upset. He's doing a little throwing up. Miss K says, you think you ought to carry him to the vet? I said, well, that's about the 10th time he's been bitten. He's built up a pretty good immunity. I said, I think he'll be all right. Well, the next morning, he's all swelled up, you know, but he didn't move much for about two or three days. He just stayed there. We kept a little water for him. Well, the swelling starts down. It healed up where the snake bit him, rotted out a little hole right up under his jaw there. It scabbed up. Within three or four days, he's, he's back out there after him again. Well, <laughs> it wasn't two or three weeks. I see some other dogs, Bobo's with me inside the house. I look outside, and I see a bunch of dogs gathered up. Arr, arr, arr. They're, they're watching something on the ground. I said, hmm, well, that's where everybody's walking back and forth to the house. Well, I didn't want the women to get beat, bit, so get bitten. So I said, well, <laughs> let me get out there and see what we got. So I got my rifle. I walk out there. There is a, a cotton mouth, and even coiled up, it wasn't over this big. So he's a little bitty cottonmouth. Less I'm than saying, bullet. which doesn't matter because they're just as lethal. Tell me about it. In fact, the young so ones. So here's even a more. six yeah. to eight inch long little bitty cottonmouth coiled up, and the dogs are the neighborhood dogs. They're on him. My neighbor's dog and two or three more hounds. I don't know where they came from, <laughs> but I got Bobo the snake wrangler. He's healed up from the previous bite. He's spinning his wheels saying, just show me where the snake is. I'll get him. He's mad about that last one that bit him. Yeah. Well, we still, go out there. Well, I, just, I just stick the twenty two rifle about that far over the coil snake because he couldn't reach me. I just put the barrel of the gun within about six inches of him. The cottonmouth opened his mouth like that. Well, I just put it like that, but I wasn't aiming. I just was pointing. Well, when I shot, the bullet barely missed his head but got him in the body, but he's not but seven inches long. I yeah. thought, how much damage could you do? Well, Bobo, when I shot, he said, I'll, I got it. Which he so learned he, his lesson from the last He one. waited till he shot. He waited till I shot, and I said, well, now let me get somewhere. But when he grabbed him, as he's shaking him, he shook him once up this way, and the snake was able to bite him right under his eyeball, mm. right in your eyelid, right here. Uh. Well... The fan goes in. The blood's coming out where he bit him. I said, that's a good thing. Well, he staggers around out there a little bit, kills the snake. That time, he didn't sweat up that much, but he was sick. Well, after about three days, he's roaming around again. I look at his eye, and it's the, his, his eyeball is about the color of this right here. Cloudy. Blue. Yeah. You know, you've seen them Catahoula cur dogs. Yep. They get yeah. blue eyed. Yep. Well, he's got that poison inside that eyeball. Well, Miss K said, well, well, you know, we don't want him to lose his eye. So I said, well, a one-eyed dog. I mean, country western singer, they sing about a one-eyed dog. But anyway, they get the dog. Are you they, familiar with the one-eyed dog? So dogs? Bobo went to the vet. The last word I heard from the vet is uh, the, the poison had gotten inside the eyeball. Mm. Infection had set, set in. So they're giving him on and got, got him on a regimen. I don't know how you cure a dog had been bitten eye by a snake, but... But they said, we, th we think we can save the eye. So they're working on it. I figured one eye, but, you know, if you're a snake wrangler, you need both eyes. You need both eyes because yeah. he's going to have a blind spot, and you know he's not going to stop. Well, that's an update when the water comes in the yard. That's just some of the offshoots of yeah. what transpires. But at least they're biting the dogs instead of us. So there you go. <laughs> they're our first line of defense. Got to have them. 
Get it's out. a wacky world down here on the river, and a lot of these people <laughs> in New York are saying, good grief. I mean, you know, y'all fighting snakes to get in and out of there. Well, well it's funny, the kind of stuff we basically live with, and, and we grew up this way, but now we're a little more, we're in town. We don't deal with this these type of situations quite as much as we used to. We're a little more yeah. civilized. That's why you hold these dogs in such high regard. That's right. Because there's been a many a moment. I'll let the dog go in. You know, if I'm walking down the bank with Bobo, I, I'm letting him. Cause he's basically saying, I'm on point. The coast is clear. You got it. Because trust me, when he runs <laughs> up on one, you know it. You know it. So uh, part of the life on the river <clears throat> and uh, and having good dogs, which is awesome. Uh, I've been getting a lot of good comments from folks uh, that have been listening in and, and watching uh, just about, you know, uh, what we've been talking about in the Bible. And last time we kind of got into Genesis uh, three and four, and we've been just kind of started at the beginning of the Bible. And we've been talking about, of course, how God created everything that we see, why he did it. And then we've been talking about, you know, the very first human beings, how sin came into the world through them. And that's kind of where we left off is how that's begun to impact us. Even all these years later, uh, as we look at it in the scriptures, even my dog Bobo would agree that serpents are dangerous. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So it's not by accident that Satan is portrayed as a serpent. That's right. Because and my, we my, to- even Bobo would say I, that he needs to get be killed and stamped out of your life. Well, that's <laughs> well, where we, we talked are. about that. Remember Genesis three fifteen, which was a reference to Christ. It's I, I will put enmity between you and the woman when he's speaking to Satan. But also that's come forward even in the vessel that Satan was possessing that this serpent. And the serpent was made to slither along the ground. So whatever he was prior. Well, you would think he had legs before Something that. different, exactly. And, which I think explains some of the evolutionary process, too. I mean, the, I think the, the account in Genesis is basically giving you human beings and overall about the origin of mankind and the earth in a way you can understand it. I mean, obviously, we're following and serving a being that is above your capacity to grasp fully. If you could really understand him in detail, he wouldn't be who he who he is. Well, that's right. so even much. physical <laughs> serpents, cotton mouths, coral snakes, rattlesnakes, and copperheads, we have all four here. Yep. Just the idea of that kind of danger being all around you all the time, it, it's a pretty good uh well, what would you call it? Depiction of of the evil yeah, one. Yeah, evil of one, the yeah. evil. There's no doubt. I mean, dangerous. He'll hurt you. You have to be careful. All the things. So that somewhere, go in, especially a cottonmouth, because that cottonmouth, un, unlike other snakes, he doesn't seem to have that fear. That's right. Of human beings, it, you crowd him. He's like they're aggressive. This is my territory. Right. Yep. Well, most look, most wild come. yeah animals go the other way, but he he's like no, I'm standing my ground. Bobo so, will attest that he is one dangerous <laughs> thing. So he's, to prove and to prove this idea about this enmity idea between us and snakes, um, somebody in the state of Louisiana has been a few years ago. They took a fake snake, but a big one, big old rattlesnake, and and laid him out on the side of the road on a shoulder, and then they wanted to see what happened. People reaction. Just a little sociology study. I mm-hmm. think they said he was ran, the snake was run over 542 times within the first two hours. The, man, it, the boy it, and the girl <laughs> were napping. They had a boy and a girl napping. Uh, the eunuch showed me this the other day on the black box. He said, look at that. Well, it was a couple. That's a phone, by the way. Yeah, box. they were sleeping and taking a nap out on the, some parking lot. Right beside them, within feet, was about a three and a half, four foot rattlesnake that had just, just, they were within feet of him. Well, some deputy sheriff pulled up there and said, and saw it. And he gets out of his car. He said, don't move. Don't make a move. He said, and the snake was just easing away from him, had been right beside him. And the deputy said, there's a four foot rattlesnake right beside you. When I tell you to get up, get up and run. I noticed that the guy got up and left the chick (laughs) <laughs> lying there but the guy got up and it's adios and she was like oh <laughs> he, he, he got into every man for himself mode oh yeah i bet they had marital problems yeah they probably had I to think see a so. counselor after that they one. probably broke up over that 
Oh, I when I was in school, the the worst whipping I ever saw, you know, deliver, you know, kids fight. You know, I don't know. We were junior high or whatever. But one of these new kids from the city came out there, and he had the old fake fake snake trick. You know, put the snake out there. People holler. And boy, did he get a butt whooping for that. <laughs> I, I thought, you don't do that out here. There's so many poisonous no. snakes yes, out no, here. We don't play. This is not funny no. in this area because, nope. you know, look, I've been literally six inches away from a cottonmouth trying to strike me with his mouth open. I mean, you remember the day oh, yeah. we were hunting? Because you're vulnerable in the winter. I mean, You were it, in a pea rug, weren't you? Yeah. yeah I, I, and they sunk down happened, low. His thing was head high. We were, we were hunting at Cypress Break up the creek. And a bunch of ducks come in, boom, by boom, boom, boom. And one of them, you know, went down. I, I went to try to retrieve him, so I run back there. But I stepped on a log. Of course, this is hindsight. When the log I stepped, was, the, the, it was a floating duck blind on logs. On logs, but it had a hole in it. Yep. And when I stepped on it, it gave. In, in fact, I remember it to the point of I need to get off this log because I thought, you know, here we go. We got, you know, the log game going on. And so I jumped in the p row, which is never a good idea. It almost, you know, fell over. But I was in a hurry. So I get in the p row paddle, get the duck. Well, when I come back to that log, I was pulling the p row up there. Well, that cotton mouth had come out of that log. Mm. And when I looked down, he was culled up on the on the edge of the log. Ah, level. Yeah, and he and in a flash, I mean, just a blink, he struck. Of course, Ooh. I I literally blacked out the last thing i remember was that cotton mouth coming at my nose fangs out and i blacked out and boom i shot so i i i, f- I forgot that part it's a window in my so, mind so, so let me fill in the gap because i'm yeah. inside the blind so i hear jace and you, you kind of hear a little bit of a bump and here's what i heard <laughs> yeah boom it was it was yeah. like this sound but it wasn't like a normal like it was it was it was a panicked. You sound. found out what that is. That that's a sound that you didn't I'm know you made to be sound. snake bit. Yeah, I didn't know. It was some kind of guttural terror. Yeah, that I have a. It was like one beat and then it was, boo. I mean, when somebody fires a shotgun right behind you, I mean, yeah. it, it got our attention. I do remember. I picked up what was left of the snake and I showed it to him. Remember? Yeah. And when I he, you know how their nerves will still move after their death. Remember his nerve moving. I dropped that snake and shot it again. Basically, there was literally nothing left. It blew a hole in the blind. And I'm like, you were scared, Jason. Oh, I was running scared, buddy. You know. But when you read the story in Genesis, I think that's how we should feel over the spiritual forces of evil. You know, Ephesians six. Sean evil. I, that's how if you get that kind of mindset that it's a cotton mouth coming fangs open because at that point it's too late i mean it could have bit me it was just that's that the lucky. physics of it all is why i survived or maybe you know god almighty intervened one of those two things happened but it wasn't that he didn't try to bite me in the face it just he come close but, no but you think about it across the span of time that's why it makes sense that that snakes have always been persona non grata people don't like them people are afraid of it even if you didn't even know yep. to be afraid so it's that connection to evil i think that we see from yeah. the genesis well the non-believers will say they took that that was here already you know what came first and that's right. why they used it right but as a believer i think the reason it, it, it came before it's pretty interesting because some snakes are good snakes Right, They're that's like true. King snakes, they are the ones that swallow cotton mouths whole. That's right. So when we see a king snake, we say, "Ooh, don't bother him." Or a rat snake. He's good. He's good. What was your rat snake? You had a rat snake that lived out in the Duck Commander uh, deal, oh, yeah. and you wouldn't let us hurt him because you that's called right. him a name, a Pete or something. Yeah, yeah. You said, "Leave old Pete alone. He's oh, eating yeah. the rats around yeah. here." Oh, yeah. so, I mean, a rat snake looks like oh, he's some looking. kind of viper. You would he's think, got the horn looking deals. On oh, you would think now that thing will hurt you, but he won't. No, no. And Dad said, "Don't hurt him." But yeah. we, so we learned that which snakes yeah. were good, which snakes were bad, which ones you shoot, which ones you don't. Oh, I told my which kids. is pretty interesting. Yeah. Even in the snake world and the evil world, there are good people out there. You know that that's right. Do what's right. So you say, you know, it's a that's right. It's, God was pretty smart in 
portraying the evil one as a serpent. He's far bigger and more powerful than a cotton mouth, I can tell you but that. But you notice those snakes are always lurking. <coughs> yep. I, when I hear somebody tell a story and say, oh, I killed a cotton mouth the other day, and they start telling the story, and you know you've had the same thing happen, and you know whatever he killed wasn't a cotton mouth because right. he's describing a story, and what they do, that's not what they do. They're like, oh, that thing was six foot long, you know, and that big. Oh, I'm yeah. thinking, no, nope. no, what wasn't a cotton mouth, of course, you know. <laughs> And well, I was in New York. We were doing a show for a new book. And so we're in the back on the hair and makeup, you know, and there's a guy there. And so I'm telling him the Bobo story that you just told. And it was funny. So I tell him, and, and this guy's never seen it. He said, I've never seen a snake in my life. But when I was telling him the story about the snake biting the dog, he literally like, <laughs> you know, yeah, like his yeah. body, he had a tremor yeah. in his body. And I thought, well, that shows you how frightening this guy's never even seen one in the yeah. wild. He lives in New York City. He hasn't seen a snake in his right. life. But it physically, he had a tremor just from what either what he'd seen on television or whatever. But again, it's that, I think it goes back to that nature. We yeah. talked about how that sin, once introduced, began to have this sort of <clears throat> cascade effect on not just Adam and Eve, and their reaction to God, because of course it broke the relationship. But then it, as it began to go forward, which is what we want to talk about today, it then began to affect all humanity at that time because they're populating the earth. So <clears throat> you're beginning to see the generations. So you get into Genesis five, you start seeing the generations. Of course, the first sons that we see it impacted were Cain and Abel. <clears throat> we talked about that last time. Cain was jealous of his brother over the sacrifice, which, by yep. the way, this idea of sacrifice came, comes about after sin as well, and that will get expanded. You know, We'll talk about that as we go through the whole Bible. But we see the first reaction on this jealousy, which we had never seen jealousy before, but it ran itself out so strong in Cain that he murdered his brother over, over God being more pleased about his sacrifice. So now we're seeing this idea of vengeance, murder, all these new things that are we'd never seen before in the Bible because we're just barely into it. So we're seeing sin spread. And well, once the separation occurred, which there's a lot of different views on how that affected. You know, some people believe that because Adam and Eve sinned, that you, you're like born into that sin. I, I lean toward <laughs> the idea of once they were separated, it just – now gave the opportunity for every human to go through that same process. That's right. I, I mean, agree. <clears throat> you know, there's a difference because because a lot of people say, well, I just can't help it. Well, you, you can. You just choose not to. I mean, there, you have that ability to choose and all sin once they reach an age that, you know, I know we all share that same same view. I believe, you know, babies are, are innocent 100 sure. percent. They're not, you know, like if you know, God forbid, you know, a baby dies, which, which happens. I'm 100% sure that that baby is safe. Yep. As opposed to saying people like us who have sin and are separated from God. And we understand what Jesus did. We understand that we're saved. So you have safe, then you have lost, which is the separation, you know, from God. Then you have saved. I, that's the way I tend to view humanity. We inherited Adam's sinful nature. We all inherit his nature. Right. The nature which is, like the Which the, is the, the ability yeah. to know the difference between, remember the tree was the knowledge of good, good and evil. And evil. <clears throat> God Correct. said, you don't want to mess, don't touch that and don't eat that fruit because you, if you do, you'll die. Well, when we're infants, our sinful nature is not kicked in because our conscience Right. has not been developed yet to know the difference. If you're an uh, infant in a crib, you know nothing about lying, stealing, That's right. immorality, drunkenness. You know nothing about that. Well, right. Your I think, conscience is not there to recognize yeah. evil. Yeah, at some I think point Galatians 5.19 has a, has a curious but, but profound word when it says the sinful nature, which or the flesh, flesh is, the is old, some of it. Translate. It says the sinful nature is obvious it, it's not something that's a gray area it's obvious what yep. sin is whether people claim that or not but people that are non-believers a lot of them will say well you know how do you really know and 
No, it's obvious. It's we, obvious. we understand, and it has a list there that are obvious sins. Well, it's also obvious when you look at a kid, and I mean, you know, a young kid, they're they're not they don't have that maliciousness about them. E- even if they do something where they understand the English language, where they do something that's wrong, they're not understanding the gravity of the sinful nature at that point. So I I deem them as safe. I think it's fine to dedicate them. You know, some religions dedicate them to the Lord. That's sure. fine. But at some point, they're going to reach. You know, as Romans seven nine says, that commandment comes to yep. their to their conscience. Where life. there is no <laughs> law, sin is dead. You say so. An infant, there's no law because their mind has not developed enough to know the difference between right. good and evil. Where there's no law, there's no sin. How would a little kid know that uh, I don't need to be lying and I don't need to be stealing and you're two years old? They wouldn't know that. But as their conscience develops, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden their <coughs> sinful nature they inherited from Adam kicks in. Here comes the law, and we know the difference between good and evil because our conscience tells us that was not. I shouldn't have done that. Right. I, I, I lied to my mother. I know I'm not telling her the truth here, but which and, I think and is then the evidence. You go down of, that road. Well, that's right. I think that's the, the one of the strongest evidences of God. I do too. Well, and think that, about it. It was Adam and Eve. They were adults, but they were just what you just described in a child because they they didn't know right. until they made a knowledgeable choice that's to right. know. And so that's yep. exactly what has to happen with children. So so here's the way it lays out. Jay's talked about the flesh, <clears throat> which is most of the older versions use that word. The newer stuff uses sinful nature. So we talk about living by the. So the division you see in the New Testament is this idea about are we driven by the flesh or by the spirit? You'll see that divide quite a bit. Paul uses it a lot. Easily recognized. Exactly. So do I live by the carnal fleshly part of me or do I live by that part that says, you know what? I don't, I don't think that's right to do. I mean, that that's destructive. I don't want to do that. There's That's where that conscience kicked in. So we see that division. Well, if you go back in time to where we're at in Genesis, these are the first people. So this idea of division happens. So, so, so Cain kills Abel, and then there's another son called Seth that comes along. Seth basically, he, in the, the wording used in Genesis, he was one of the sons of God. In other words, he knew that I, I want to live not by the flesh. Unfortunately... Cain's line, as it begins to run out, when you read this in Genesis 4 and 5, you start seeing that, well, once sin runs out, you know, there was a, a one of his son's sons, I think, and uh, we read about him in Genesis 5. You know, it was pretty evident. It was one man, one woman. That's how God created it, and that was the way everybody was living. And all of a sudden, this guy, Lamech, says he had two wives. And it doesn't give an explanation. It just... It just was stated a matter of fact yep. that he had two wives. And then he has this little statement. I tell you what, if Cain is, a you know, seven times, I'm going to kill 77 times. Like he was so full of vengeance. He was a product of Cain that his life was out of control. I mean, he's just, he's married and whoever he wants to, he's, he's I'm going to kill everybody in violence. And so we see this divide get bigger and bigger. And it becomes a sexual free for all. That's right all the way to Noah, you know, uh, and, and by the time you get to Noah, you're like, their every thought's evil. I mean, I, I'm God saying, I'm sorry I made them. Once they're... And he said the begin- violence had reached... Oh. What, where's that verse? It's, in, it's says, in Genesis uh, 6. The uh, violence mm-hmm. had reached a point of something it's it's verse 5 genesis 6 5 what does it yeah. say? the lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time yep well i thought that said something about <laughs> violence somewhere in there. It, it does uh if you keep going yeah you uh, gotta remember it started back there after adam succumbed to it right eve first then adam then here comes the children, and you know, remember the remember what God said to Cain. He said, "Why are you angry? Uh oh, we got an angry young man. Why is your face downcast? There's guilt here. You're you're angry, and you're looking at the ground. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? 
Right. This is how powerful sin is. But if you do not do what is right, here's the way God put it, way back. This is leading up to the first murder, and there's not before people on the earth for crying out loud. If you don't do what's right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Well, John the Apostle, 5,000 years later, wrote about Cain, and he said, this is what we've heard from the beginning. We should love one another. That's what Cain's problem is. He doesn't love his own brother, Abel. Right. didn't love him. So he's angry. He's jealous, like you said. And God is warning him, look, sin's crouching at your door. Well, John the Apostle said, we should love one another. That's what we've heard from the beginning. Do not be like Cain, who murdered, who belonged to the evil one. Right. Uh-oh. You say he's fallen under the control of the evil one, starting with the original sin, handed down to him. He's mad at his brother for really no good reason over a tithe. Right. He became jealous, <laughs> and all of a sudden, by the way, the, the weapon of choice is not even mentioned on how he killed him. They just went out in the field, and he killed him. How it, the, the, the instrument is not even mentioned. That's not the point. The point is he belonged to the evil one, and he murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his actions, his own actions were evil, and his brothers was righteous. Right. Uh, Abel didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, Genesis six eleven was where that verse where it says, "Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence." Right. Yep. But it takes me back to my childhood. You know, I mean, here, I mean, Willie was the closest to me. I mean, we fought pretty frequently, but you were five years older. You know, it, you wasn't much you were of a fight. out of my weight class. You know, but uh, <laughs> but I'm still out uh, of your weight class. Yeah. So here's me and Willie. I mean, we fought pretty much every day. There was a two to four year period. We fought every day. And uh, and I'd get the best of him because I was older, wiser, you know. I a learned more, to a little more wily, manipulate the girth. But <laughs> but I noticed I, it, y'all it, didn't it, fight too much when I was present. No, well, because the rule was if there's bloodshed, <laughs> we meat, both got whipped. Meat, no meat fighting pop. in the house. That was the code. Of meat that's popping. The, Dad said you can you, you could let it go up to when he heard the meat pop. You know. my, my 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 rule was, I don't mind you speaking loudly to make a point. If you want to raise your voice, no problem. But if raising your voice, the next level turns into blows, where there yeah. is where there I hear, I hear meat coming together, popping. Yeah. I said I come in and break it all up. Everyone everyone gets their their butt. Put leather on their butt. Oh, look, no, it, no fighting it was in the, the house. the same yeah. process. But what I mean is I, I understand that struggle, you know, with Cain and Abel, because you're gonna have you're gonna fight with, with your family. The the point is how far do you take that? You know, once you're separated from God, you know, once once the garden happened and that yep. separation, you now it, it's tough sometimes to pull back and say, wait a minute, this is going too far. You have that decision to say, Well, wait a minute, just you know, because what's weird is we would fight almost every day. Yeah. But you go to school and somebody says something about Willie, and now me and him are on this guy. You know, we're fighting hand in hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, the sinful nature, when all that starts, that's the beginning of the sinful nature rearing right. its ugly head, Al. You're right. And you look at some of these uh, nations that are right next door to each other, especially over in the Middle East and the Far East. I mean, they were all come out of the same group. Now there's a line between them, and they hate their That's brother. Right. I mean, right across the border. We build barriers. That's right. It's that idea of division, and that's what it brings about. Chase, is, that's a great point because if you and don't, murder is the end result, it is, and, it, and you need you know like from a parental standpoint. I mean, I, I remember one of the things you did, which this was crazy. You would think this would be some kind of child endangerment now, but back then. <laughs> I remember we were coming home from church, and you know we had this big deal about you know don't touch me. You couldn't you know, touch. No touching. If you're, <laughs> of course, here we are. You know, there's like seven of us in, in a, a car, it, and it's designed to hold three people. <laughs> and I got a problem. You know, if you're touching my skin, like Willie, if he ever touched your me, own brother, it's on. <laughs> Look, and he, so he would take his finger and he would put it as close as possible because if it ever made contact. 
I'm coming with a right hook. <laughs> I didn't know that was going on oh, in the back yeah. seat. Yeah. There. Well, here's what was that. Okay. That one day, we're so we're having that little game going because Willie he he would he would always try to push the button. He would put his finger down and just hover it. You know, <laughs> well, you hit a bump and he touches me, and then I'll I jab him in the rear. <laughs> and you just pulled over on the side of the road and day. Hey, get out. Well, we're probably three miles up the road here. I was like, we we're looking around. He's like, get it, y'all walk. Y'all figure out how to get along by the time you get to the house. <laughs> but what I'm saying, I was kind of thankful for that because then I thought, well, that was dumb. You know, I mean, now I'm walking. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it was dumb over what it, you know, what it was over. It was that's what it was about. It was literally, so you ended up walking down. That's when before they paved the road is an old dirt road. No dirt you know? road. We walked three miles. Two brothers walking down a dusty road. What are y'all doing? Well, we fighting in the back of the car. Yep, that's what it was. <laughs> but I'm saying as redneck discipline. <laughs> when right. things happen, it's how you respond to it. And y'all were smart enough to say, you know, we need to do something about it and teach her the way there's a right way to handle this and there's a wrong way. And when when you don't when you have no nobody trying to get in there and help the situation you do you have bad things happen when kids are kids and then they develop you know all this bitterness and it it leads to one day something that you never would think possible some some guy's killing his brother that's right and i think the world just looks at how does that happen and it's usually a long road of bad decisions and how you respond to situations the evil one starts contributing there and then one day you look up and, and that's what happens. So here's what's even much more common than somebody actually physically taking their life, which happens here, although it does happen. Here's what happens in a practical sense across our culture. You got brothers, sisters, brother, sister, whoever, mom, dad, if they know them, they have no relationship. Don't talk to each other for their whole lives no. over something happened when they were young, some sinful thing that got in between them, whether it was jealousy or something else. So, it's not a death in the sense of what we read about here, but it really is a death because it's the death of a relationship. I mean, we think about us getting together and we tell stories that Jace just told about different ways you disciplined us, but we're doing that as a family because we love each other. We're not perfect. We still make mistakes even as adults, but we're family, you know, yeah. and, and we're trying to go for that spiritual side. That's that the difference. When alienation happens, which, look, you think about how the evil one works. It's all about that alienation. Somehow he created that atmosphere where Eve thought that God wasn't listening to the original conversation. And the same things happens in these relationships. You know, Cain gets bitter for whatever reason, how he responded, jealousy, all these things that happen. And then you feel like God's not, he's a million miles away it's not real. where you can do this and then cover it up. You know, remember when he said his blood is crying out to me from the ground, you know, God said that it's yeah. like, like you think you could do this, in my creation under my nose you're you're my creation and then somehow another covered up which is the number one thing with even you know gangs and murderers mm -hmm. you know they try to get is, rid of the body you and know? it is worthy of note that we're in a time frame well before the law of moses was given that says commandment number six do not murder that's right they they, they their their conscience was telling them this is not right they're angry at each other, mm -hmm. and it's leading up to pre-flood where they all just, yeah, it, terrible. it's a, just a sinful, free-for-all, out-of-control, disobedient, mm -hmm. ungodly, ever-thought evil. You say, well, that's a crazy story. Really? Well, you just look at fast forward till present day, right. and you say, no. It's still a sinful free for all, no matter where you go I, I worldwide. Think it, I think it was introducing God, what I call God's DNA, also in that no matter what happens, He's gonna love. He's about life. He's always pro life. Yep. In every situation. That's right. Yep. He's pro life. He's pro love, and He's about light. As in, we're not covering it up. We're not hiding it. Even when you make mistakes, you deal with it. Because if you don't, it blossoms. It, it, that's and you, how you what go you down run that into, road. the Hebrew writer had it well. So you fast forward from the time frame we're looking at, judgment, the flood, in time judgment. Their every thought was evil. So you fast forward 5,000 years. The Hebrew writer said, anyone who lives on milk 
being still an infant, and y'all were discussing that as you begin to get a little older and a little older, the fighting starts and all that, it's not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. When you're young, like an infant, you, you just don't get it. Well, but solid food, once you begin to mature as a, and turning into an adult, solid foods for the mature who by constant use, a lot of people miss this, biblically speaking, they have trained themselves. This is Hebrews 5, about 13 and following. The mature, by constant use, putting what God said into practice, have trained themselves. Think about the people in the days of Noah before the flood. You said this is where they were sorely lacking. Uh, Al. Yep. They didn't take the scriptures, which there were none. There were there was no law. It was just humanity without a code. Don't do this. Don't uh, children honor your father and mother. Right. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't be a martyr. Don't murder. <clears throat> Before that happened, you say, man, what was the human race like? Oh, it was a murderous, wicked, evil, sexually. <laughs> so what? who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. You say, so here we are now, but the story's been told. We're at a much better time frame yeah. than the people back in the days prior to the flood. That's right. I mean, they had no code to live by. Yep. It was just a free-for-all. But you're reading, uh, where was that, Hebrews? Hebrews 5. The, well, uh, and I think it's and interesting uh, in Hebrews two before before he wrote that he wrote in two fourteen that since the children have flesh and blood, speaking of Jesus, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of fear of death. So I think he was introducing why Jesus came. It, it goes back to that first murder and you see the work of the evil one there that, you know, that conversation, whether he was inhabiting the snake or became the snake, right. it's the same principle. And then you see years later, why we had the need for Jesus. Yeah. He, By he the way, had to destroy that work, which right. is take you captive with your decision-making and then kill you. And while we're there, remember Genesis 1, 26, before the fall of man, God said, let us make man in our image. Well, the father, the son, John 1, 1, was there in the beginning. Jesus was there, father, son, Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image. This is to get us here. Well, the Father's there, but so is the Son. Jesus is there five to 6,000 years prior to him becoming flesh. In Genesis, he was there because, remember, when man sins, going back to Hebrews 2.14, it's right on the heels of the fall. It's when God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, tells mm. Satan in Genesis 3.15, the way out is given early. Uh, I'll put enmity between you and the woman and between. He's talking to Satan, God is. Father, in, Son, is holy. Yeah. yeah, this is before Jesus becomes flesh, but he's there. But Jesus is talking about himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, when he says, and between your offspring and her, he, whoever's going to come forth from a woman, is going to crush your head. So the judgment on Satan is, is given, mm -hmm. well, you follow that story and you say, you'll finally get to the one who came from the woman. You say, good night. That's the Jesus through whom all things were created. Here's God coming in flesh. He told yeah. Satan right Just at the beginning, to be I'll like give us. you, yeah. you're going down. And for all you human beings, there's a way out. Which, by the way, Jesus showed us the way because Satan came, remember in Matthew 4, he came directly to physical now Jesus 
and he said, and he tempted him. That's yeah, right. And look, we've been talking about this idea of flesh. How did he tempt him? Three different ways. First Tried of all, to get him through from Genesis it was, all the way through. It was through. first the flesh. Remember, he was hungry. He had been fasting forty days. Yep. He said, "Turn all this into bread if you're hungry. Mm. If you're hungry, it was eat." A, it was a classic battle of flesh versus. Spirit. It was. So he starts there. Then the next thing he does, he takes him up on the temple. And he says, just throw yourself down. I mean, make yourself known. But he said, don't put the Lord your God to the it's test. It's like going yeah. back to what he's told Adam and Eve. Exactly. It's the yeah. same deal. And then the, remember the last one is he took him up on the mountain. And he said, you see all the kingdoms of the world? They belong to me. Yep. And he was right. I mean, all these people that had bowed their knee to Satan and follow him still do today. So many, The same lie. He said, if you'll make a deal with me. We'll rule together. You the, cannot make a deal with the devil. Yeah, the mm-hmm. same lie that the evil one is telling Jesus, who's God, trying to lure him in, was the same lie he was telling Adam and Eve at the beginning. All the way Same through. lie. And but he, it also says, that's why in Hebrews 4, where it says Jesus was tempted in every way, just that's right. as we are, yet was without sin. That's right. So he is able to help those in our weakness, what he gives us which the, is awesome. He gives us the roadmap. You say, no, I'm not going to live by my flesh. No, I'm not going to go against the plan of God. No, I'm not going to bow my knee to you. I'm going to bow my knee to God. So he gives us the roadmap for dealing with the evil he, one. He gives you the roadmap and the redemption. Because right. when you don't say no, he still says, I'll tell you what. <laughs> That's a great point. I will forgive you anyway. Get up and try again. I mean, you know, it's one of the... I mean, it's not one of the, it is the greatest, the greatest. Oh. redemption ever. story ever that makes complete sense. And predicted from the original fall. That's right. And if you just follow what, what Genesis 3.15 says, Jesus on the scene, invisible, Father, Son, in, invisible. You say 5,000 years and all of a sudden you look up and here comes God from a woman, just like Genesis 3, you know, the a seed of a, 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 virgin. a virgin woman. Here's the Jesus, but well, all of a impossible. sudden the invisible God becomes visible and he's come to deliver us from where it happened way back over in Genesis. The prophets, they begin to say, Jesus is coming, mm-hmm. Jesus is That's coming. That's why when people ask me, they say, I started reading the Bible, you know, the Old Testament, I don't understand it. And I, I always say the same thing, Jesus is coming. That's it. They're like, what? That, that's, From the get-go. That is that's what funny. it's saying. Now, there's a lot of hills and valleys. A lot of hills and valleys. But <laughs> I'm on my way. That's what he I'm said. I'm coming to earth, the same earth you're on. So I've always thought in Genesis when you said the God, you know, Jesus was there. I've always viewed this. I may be wrong, but I just wanted to see what you thought about it. You had the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters. Yep. You have God creating. I've always viewed Jesus when he said, you know, let us make man in our image, is when he said, and God said. Because since he later on is described as the The word, word, I always thought when he said, there's your introduction to Jesus. He's the communication of God. That's it. You think about it. If you want to know, you, you want to get to know the almighty God, which our brain can't comprehend. We talked about earlier. Too big. Jesus became a human. To explain God. That's what John 1, 17 hmm. says. He came we to explain. We actually got to look at him. That's so right. when he said, I've always thought there was Jesus. Yep, the word. Yep. I believe you are correct, sir. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's a wild. So so we're gonna let you guys uh, pontificate and think a little bit about that. Uh, what we talked about today, uh, basically, this judgment idea of the flood is uh, is where we'll pick up next time. Uh, and just show what basically happened when you get down to basically one family being all that's left. And so we'll talk about that as well as how that relates to some of the judgments that we see today. Next time on Unashamed. By the way, Al, started with a few, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and their sons and daughters. You say a few. Well, here comes the flood. We're back where we started. <laughs> now there's no one his family. How I many? Eight. There's eight left. Well, that's better than four. You know, Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. You say, boy, the, to get us here, Al, it was a, quite a stroke of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, providence. Oh. And yet here we are. Yeah. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about this more next time on Unashamed. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.